Hi friends, so today I'm going to talk about how to do a master's degree in computer science. And this is based on a request from one of our viewers. And uh, before I start this topic, let me talk about some generic issues. Now, when I was doing my bachelor's degree in 85 time frame, that's a long time ago, there was generally this feeling that while a lot of top students are taking computer science, it's a passing fad. There are not many opportunities in computer science. People will return back to the core disciplines that is mechanical, electrical, civil, and so on. Now this particular thinking has continued as far as university professors are concerned in many cases. But it's not borne out by actual expansion of the industry which essentially uses computing. And later we came to see that the whole field of information technology came up and a very large number of people were employed in these jobs. So I think what people missed out when they think about computer science is that most of the people who work on computing do not necessarily have a formal background in computer science. But there are a few skills which essentially make it possible for you to work in jobs related to computing. And the reason there are so many jobs related to computing is that in contrast to say a typical hardware product such as if you are making computer chips or you're making uh, aircraft or you're making cars or ships, there are far more number of software products which you can create. There are far more number of apps which you can create. There are far more number of models which you can create, whether you are modeling aircraft or cars or ships and so on. So what has happened is that there are now very few companies around the world which actually produce hardware products. And you can see that through the process of mergers, these companies keep getting reduced. So if you look at the aerospace field, you see a few large companies dominate the entire world market. For example, Boeing and Airbus. But if you look at computer software, you're going to find a very large number of companies out there. It's not completely dominated by the top companies like Microsoft. So it's always possible for somebody to come up with a new software company, but it's very difficult for people to come up with a company which produces computer chips or aircraft or cars because you need to establish an entire manufacturing base, uh, service network, marketing and all these different aspects. So that's why computer science remains one of the most important fields as far as jobs are concerned. So one of the things about getting a master's degree in computer science is that you don't need a bachelor's degree in computer science. So in fact, you can do a bachelor's degree in many different fields and you can still do a master's degree in computer science. So just as an example, you could do a BS in engineering, any of the mathematics type of fields, statistics, physics, and also in fields such as psychology, languages, English, linguistics, even music. Because there are aspects of computer science where knowledge of any of these fields is useful. So, for example, if you are well versed in languages, that directly comes into the problem of natural language processing. If you are well versed in psychology, you can make interesting contributions to AI and machine learning. If you are well versed in physics, you could probably bring some of that knowledge into physics based neural networks. If you are versed in statistics, you can contribute substantially to data science type of problems. If you know mathematics very well, you can develop algorithms you can develop new methods and numerical computation and so on. So people often mistake that they cannot do a computer science if they do not have a bachelor's degree in computer science. 
but that's not so you can still do a master's degree in computer science now of course you need to look at the specific institution you are targeting very often they will require some kind of test you may need to give a test such as the GRE or the gate to get into any of these universities so of course you need to spend time in studying for any of these exams be it GRE gate GMAT and so on now if you do not get into a computer science master's program there are some tactics which you can use to get a degree which is similar to computer science in terms of marketability and that is a master's degree in data science and again data science has come up because a lot of the aspects of theoretical computer science have been segregated from actually what's used by people so what most people use is the fact that data needs to be manipulated and to manipulate data and to get information from data essentially the key knowledge which you use is that of statistics so essentially you use statistics you use some elements of mathematics you may use optimization and certainly you, you use a large number of libraries and functions which have been created in Python such as pandas scikit-learn and so on you could also use TensorFlow which is created by Google and many of these softwares are actually free out there there are a lot of example problems and tutorials on YouTube which you can use to learn any aspect of data science but returning to formal degree programs in data science uh, sometimes these are even offered by the arts department so you can literally do an MA degree in data science in many universities so what has happened is that many of the statistics programs have reincarnated themselves into data science programs and this has led to an increase in their marketability now if you are somebody who is not very much into deep mathematics or statistics one way to get into computers at the master's level is to do a degree in information systems and these type of degrees can be done in the management departments so if you look at any university around the world you will find they have management departments and most people think that these departments essentially give MBA degrees but that's not so many of these departments actually do give out a master of science degree or a master of technology type of degree with much less coursework sometime a thesis and essentially here you study a lot of the tools which are used in the so-called field of IT or information technology so again the master of information systems is something which lets you get into the computing field and take advantage of the plethora of jobs out there in discipline without necessarily doing a master in computer science now what's so special about computer science I would say that the key subjects in computer science which all engineers and all people should know are data structures algorithms and a programming language so essentially in programming language you could learn something like Python or you could learn something like C++ or Java in fact these three languages are nowadays often taught in high schools and uh, in fact if you are doing a first year college you often have a possibility of learning one of these languages whether you are coming from a technical or STEM background or even if you are coming from an arts or social science background it's actually very easy to learn Python for any type of person now one of the things I would recommend is that if you are in a field which is not in computer science so maybe you got admission and scholarship into a mechanical engineering program or a civil engineering program or some other program and um, now you have a research problem you are starting something else try to take a course in machine learning and generally this is possible you can talk to your supervisor you can talk to your professors at the department and they will of course always let you take a course in machine learning because machine learning can often be used in your area whether you are dealing with mechanics of material or you are dealing with cryptography or you are dealing with um, modeling of some systems 
Now, beside machine learning, one more course which is useful for anybody interested in computers is optimization. And optimization essentially started off as function minimization and then took off as function minimizations with constraints. And so there are a plethora of methods which have come up. Some of them are based on gradients, that is derivatives, uh, recall calculus and differentiation. And then some of them do not use derivatives. So there are a bunch of probabilistic or stochastic methods which essentially search the entire design space. So you may have heard of methods such as those based on genetic algorithms, particle swarm optimization and so on. So these two courses are very important to know that is machine learning and optimization especially if you are at the graduate level or even if you are at the fourth year UG level. Now before that of course I mentioned the key courses in computer science which you need to know are data structures, algorithms and a language such as Python. Now I would say that computer science people study a lot more than this. They study subjects such as programming languages, compiler design and so on. But then think about it, how many people are actually designing compilers nowadays. The compilers you have are generally quite good and you generally use them. So the complete formal study of computer science is not required for most information technology type of jobs and that is why you see a large number of people who have done their degrees in any engineering major or science major are able to do problems related to computing because essentially all these people need to have is a way to think in an analytical manner and that's essentially what algorithms represent. They represent a series of steps which you need to follow to solve a problem. And this you have been doing for a long time, ever since you were doing simple problems such as trigonometry or calculus or even chemistry, balancing equations in chemistry, doing simple high school problems in physics. All these are essentially uh, algorithmic approaches to solve any problem. So most people have a good background in this. And if you combine some of this with programming language skills, you can certainly learn a lot about computing. So this was my take on computer science and computing in general. Like I mentioned, people have been predicting for 30 years the demise of computing and computer science, but the stories of the demise of computer science are greatly exaggerated. I will see you soon in a new video. See you then.